Welcome back to the lecture of cholestasis in neonates and children. I'm Dr. Amal al Faramawi, Professor of Pediatrics at Jams University. You know now from the previous segments the causes of cholestasis and the clinical picture. And in this segment, I will tell you how to approach a case of cholestasis and the management plan. The coroner's stones of assessment of a case of cholestasis are history taking, clinical examination, lab studies, radiological tests, and finally, histopathology. Thorough history taking should include history of consanguinity between the parents, positive family history of similar condition, prenatal infection during pregnancy, the presence of feeding difficulties, the presence of convulsions, and developmental history. Meticulous examination of the abdomen to detect organomegaly or ascites. Neurological examination for the alertness, tone, power, and reflexes. Cardiac examination for associated congenital heart disease, as in case of allergy syndrome. Chest examination for lung infiltration, as in case of storage disease. Lab studies can be divided to first line investigations to detect the pattern and severity of liver disease and this can be achieved by measuring the liver enzymes and assessment of the synthetic functions of the liver. Also abdominal ultrasound can be considered as a first line investigation. It can help to diagnose solid masses and cystic masses and Doppler ultrasound can help in the diagnosis of portal hypertension. Second line investigations include screening tests to know the cause. According to what you are suspecting from the history taking and clinical examination, you can assess the viral hepatitis markers, do bacterial cultures, ask for metabolic screening, or assess gamma globulins and liver autoantibodies. According to the results of the screening test, you can confirm the diagnosis by doing more sophisticated investigations, like doing PCR in case of viral hepatitis, enzyme assay for a metabolic disease, abdominal CT to evaluate masses, MR angio to differentiate hemangioma sol from solid tumor. To confirm patency of the biliary system, you can do ERCP, but it is difficult in the young age and can be replaced by HIDA scan or MRCP. Not every patient will need liver biopsy. There are certain indications for doing liver biopsy. For example, paucity of intrahepatic bile ducts is a histopathological diagnosis. Other tests may be needed according to the clinical condition. If the patient has cardiac murmur, as in case of allergy syndrome, you should do echocardiography. Fundus examination is indicated in case of intrauterine infection. Slit lamp examination is indicated for Wilson's disease to diagnose Kaiser Fleischer ring. X-rays in allergy syndrome for skeletal abnormalities, hormonal assay for endocrinal causes of cholestasis, and so on. You may need to do upper GI endoscopy for oesophageal varices due to portal hypertension, which is the end result of biliary cirrhosis, secondary to long-standing cholestasis. As regards the management plan, although the treatment of the primary cause of cholestasis is of paramount importance in resolving the symptoms, Yet, until this could be achieved, symptomatic treatment should be instituted for all cases of cholestasis, whatever the cause. For the relief of pruritus, also the oxycholic acid stimulates the bile flow and thereby facilitates canalicular secretion of the accumulated bile acids. Phenobarbital and rifampicin are microsomal enzyme inducers. They improve metabolism of bilirubin and decrease pruritus. Cholestyramine acts by binding intestinal bile acids and cholesterol, thus preventing reabsorption, thus helping in relief of itching. 
Dietetic management is very important. You have to increase the daily caloric intake for infants and use formula containing medium chain triglycerides to compensate for the chronic diarrhea due to fat malabsorption. Also supplementation of ADEC to compensate for the malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins is very important, especially vitamin K, as its deficiency is associated with high risk of bleeding. Specific treatment will be according to the etiology. For example, in case of extrahepatic biliary atresia and cholidocal cyst, its surgical treatment. Specific medical treatment is available for certain conditions as treatment of infections, dietetic modification for the metabolic causes, chelation therapy for Wilson's disease, immune suppression for autoimmune hepatitis, and so on. This will be discussed with each disease. Liver transplantation is recommended in case of decompensated end-stage liver disease. Well, this is the end of the third segment of this lecture. In the last segment, you will know some details about selected diseases that cause cholestasis.